Most news stories of late are extremely difficult to believe. Global wars, economic uncertainty, a police state rising. And in the midst of all of this are the persistent headlines of emerging and sometimes bizarre technologies. Fully automated robots in the workforce. Incredible advances in the understanding of health and immunity. Life extension technologies. Brain implantable microchips with unimaginable applications. We're going to be able to send nanobots, blood cell size devices, inside our bloodstream. They'll keep us healthy from inside and they'll go inside our brains. And if that sounds very futuristic, there are already people that have computers in their brains. What will humanity look like in the next 10 or 20 years? A human with the perfect immune system and enhanced health functions? An infinitely smarter person with their brains and minds always attached to the internet? Or how about a person with the power to control their environment just by using their thoughts? It's almost impossible to say. The technological possibilities are infinite. Is this technology just being randomly developed by thousands of talented scientists and engineers without any real plan for the future paradigm that it's going to create? Or has there been a group envisioning this future all along? It may not surprise many viewers that there is a plan which has been discussed for decades amongst the top European and American social elite who spend their time gathering in closed door clubs dedicated to the occult. Sometimes throughout history, whether because of strategy or because of moral obligation, world leaders will open the curtains ever so slightly giving the general public an opportunity to glimpse into the secret world of the elite. In the year 1856, an industrial revolution was threatening to overthrow the traditional agrarian forces in Italy. In England, Parliament was debating over whether England should intervene in the Italian crisis, when during this debate, Prime Minister Benjamin Disraeli warned, there is in Italy a power which we seldom mention in this house, but without considering and understanding which we shall never rightly comprehend the position of Italy. I mean the secret societies. The secret societies do not care for constitutional government. They do not want existing society ameliorated. They want it changed. He goes on to say, it is useless to deny because it is impossible to conceal that a great part of Europe, the whole of Italy and France, and a great portion of Germany to say nothing of other countries, are covered with a network of these secret societies. Disraeli gave this warning to prevent England from miscalculating the outcome of their intervention. According to Disraeli, the secret occult groups are a genuine power in Europe who can and will influence the outcome of England's actions in their favor. While this speech was given over 150 years ago, not much has changed in the secret lives of the global elite. Every July, the world's top politicians, bankers, corporate financiers, academics, and other elite members gather in Northern California for the annual Bohemian Grove Retreat. All-male get-together kicks off with their traditional cremation of care ceremony, where they burn the body of care in effigy in front of the mysterious great owl and eternal flame. Technologies such as the Star Wars Missile Defense Shield and the Manhattan Project were first discussed at the Bohemian Grove. The mysterious Georgia Guidestones stand as a monument to modern occultism. Sometimes called the American Stonehenge, it is unknown who commissioned this structure or why. What we do know is what the monument calls for, a world government with a world court and the requirement that the human population never exceed 500 million. Presently, that means a reduction of about six and a half billion people. Interestingly, these calls are similar to the recent papal encyclical, in which Pope Francis calls for a global political authority to tackle global warming. What's even more alarming is who will be on the stage with the Pope when this encyclical is formally released. 
John Schellenhuber is a German professor that has some very radical views on climate change, including the belief that our planet is overpopulated by at least six billion people. Clinton White House insider Larry Nichols shared his eyewitness account of Hillary Clinton's witchcraft retreats. I was there, folks. You understand there's a difference in somebody that saw it or read it somewhere. I was there. Hillary would go on the weekend. About every fourth, fifth weekend, she would disappear out to California. Finally, she came back and said, Hillary, what on earth is happening in California? She was running with her actress buddies, Linda Bloodworth Thompson and that crew. And uh, she never told me. Finally, Bill told me that she went, she goes out there to some kind of witch's church. And I said, you've got to be kidding me, Bill. No, no. He said, oh, no, man, she does. So what does all of this have to do with technology? Author and historian Theo Paymans reveals in his book, Free Energy Pioneer, John Worrell Keeley, that occult societies are just as obsessed with avant-garde technology as they are with exotic rituals. Occult groups routinely experimented with perpetual motion machines and zero-point energy motors. Rudolf Steiner said that certain mysterious societies have knowledge and understanding of occult avant-garde technological advances and energy sources, and that these affairs are being guarded as a secret in those circles on the subject of material occultism. But they will, when that which I call mechanical occultism will be put in practice, which is an ideal of these secret circles, they will achieve about 1,000 million in human labor. But mechanical occultism will not only make nine-tenths of the labor superfluous, it will also make it possible to paralyze every rebellion of the unsatisfied masses. Of this, those secret societies are well aware. On this they count when they will attain the dominance over the entire population of the Earth. Are we actually starting to see Steiner's vision take form? An automated robotic workforce, from manual labor to executive office jobs, are now being installed throughout the world, which does threaten to render human labor superfluous. Those large arm assembly line robots we're used to seeing doing the work in car manufacturing plants are yesterday's technology. Today's robotic workforce is much smaller, much cheaper, and capable of doing a variety of jobs, including executive and creative jobs. Compared to the cost of an average annual salary for just about any employee, including minimum wage workers, the robotic workers' one-time cost and near perfection in their job execution is a very appealing option. Especially now, since many cities are nearly doubling their minimum wage rate and robots don't go on strike. Anyone who is following the technology trends knows that the reality of a fully automated labor force is right around the corner. In July 2013, former Treasury Secretary Larry Summers addressed a crowd at the National Bureau of Economic Research Summer Institute. He said, until a few years ago, I didn't think this was a very complicated subject. The Luddites were wrong, and the believers in technology and technological progress were right. I'm not so completely certain now. Computers and robots are designed not simply to extend human work capacity, but to eliminate the need for humans altogether. Just as Steiner warned that the same machines that will replace the workforce can also be used to paralyze every rebellion of the unsatisfied masses, we're also witnessing the militarization of our police. Combine this grid with fully autonomous militarized robotics and Steiner's startling prediction of a technology that will replace our workforce and paralyze humanity suddenly becomes urgent. Humanity is on the brink of a crisis and now may be our last chance to solve this mortal problem. In part two, we'll focus on the centuries old plan to combine man with machine, gain superhuman abilities and live forever. It's a vision which is rapidly becoming reality within the transhumanist movement.